Welcome to the Worcester Art Museum. We're a research team from Worcester Polytech. And we're here to fill you in on the museum's plans for sword fighting related content, as well as give you some historical fun facts to get you interested. Currently on display is the Knights exhibit, featuring authentic weapons and armor from all around history. Plus Batman. The next exhibit coming up is the Meyer Idea Lab in May. It'll display The Art of Combat, a sword fighting treatise written in 1570 by Joachim Meyer in Germany. Also on display will be a training longsword which fencers would practice on each other with. The Idea Lab will feature iPads that will display a variety of content, including translations of the text, close ups of the pictures within, and recreation videos of the techniques in the book. If you want to learn the history of Joachim Meyer and his book, you'll want to visit the exhibit and hear from the curator himself. But what we do have in this video is some extra trivia about him and about the practice of sword fighting. Brief spoiler warning, Meyer does die in the end. Despite the heavy focus on the longsword and swordplay, the art of combat actually covers fighting styles for a number of different weapons, though the sword is still covered in the most detail. Other weapons found in the manual are the Dusak, the rapier, the dagger, the quarterstaff, the halberd, and the pike. Fighting with daggers was not the prettiest contest and frequently would devolve into grappling and takedowns in an attempt to control the opponent's weapon. To this end, Meyer included plenty of full contact wrestling maneuvers in the daggers chapter. Before anyone asks, this book was not the debut of the German suplex. The techniques listed in the art of combat were, for the most part, designed for the sport of fencing and not for actual combat. Although medieval fencing was serious enough that the winner was the first to draw blood, Beating your opponent into submission was highly frowned upon. As common self-defense weapons at the time, Meyer included plenty of lessons in the dagger and rapier chapters suitable for non-sport usage. The longsword techniques would probably not be used by knights on the battlefield, as armored sword fighting is much different than when unarmored. This is also due to the fact that the art of combat intentionally excludes thrusting with a longsword, a powerful maneuver, due to its inconvenient tendency to seriously hurt the opponent, even if using training swords like the one on display. Note its blunt edges and its ability to flex. Meyer even advocates techniques that take advantage of abnormal bending to circumvent the opponent's sword to whip the enemy and inflict a small cut, a technique that wouldn't work or help at all in actual combat. Really, don't try it, you'll just get stabbed. Many of Meyer's techniques are derived from traditional German fighting styles and find their bases in early treatises. Interestingly enough, he even applies them to the rapier, a weapon that he acknowledges as a newly discovered practice with the Germans and brought to us from other people. The Art of Combat was not Meyer's first production. He first produced the Rostock Manuscript starting in the mid-1560s, an annotated compilation of other fencing publications. As a swordsmith by trade, he had to jumpstart his author career by building off the work of others. Not judging, just saying. Second was the Lund Manuscript produced in 1568, an original work of Meyer's that would be later reworked into the Art of Combat. These two manuscripts were named after the universities that acquired them centuries after his death. Meyer passed away in 1571, immediately after a cross-country road trip to start his dream job. Considering this was in winter in the 16th century, this was a much less glamorous undertaking than it sounds and literally killed him. Note the text on the cover of this copy of The Art of Combat. These are actually religious poems that aren't relevant to the content of the book. Books back then were purchased unbound and brought to a professional binder afterwards. After much research, the experts have come to the conclusion that the buyer of the book was a cheapskate and had it bound in the cheapest recycled material that was available. Having covered the past and present, we can now look towards the future. Opening after the Meyer Idea Lab is the Medieval Gallery, a permanent exhibit featuring a plethora of artifacts inherited from the Higgins Armory in open storage. The Worcester Art Museum also hosts the Swordplay Workshop, for those of us who want the chance to learn how to use these weapons, or take up sword fighting as a hobby, or just hit each other with swords a lot. We hope you enjoy all the content on display, and remember, always be prepared.